Greetings, everyone, and welcome to episode 16 of Teaching Tales. I am Brent Cole, your host, and joining me today is the amazing John Stevens. John, thanks for taking the time, man. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me on, Brent. It's going to be a good yeah, time. Absolutely. Really looking forward to it. We got our technical difficulties ironed out. So uh, <laughs> let's have some, let's have a good conversation. Let's tell some stories. So um, before we get into it, tell our listeners, tell my mom and dad, who is John Stevens? Give us a little background. <laughs> well, who is John Stevens is a, is a tough question. Uh, you're, you're supposed to, you know, one of the, the lessons that we talk about in school is you should be able to Google yourself and find nothing but good things. And I'm getting a whole bunch of text messages and tweets today because John Stevens just became the new head coach of the Los Angeles Kings <laughs> hockey franchise. So, Congrats, congratulations. Wow. I hope, yeah. you, I hope you got a good contract. You are a busy man. Yeah. You know, I figured this teaching thing wasn't, uh, wasn't working out. So I figured I'd you know, become the, the next head coach. Uh, yeah. So who is John Stevens? That's a, that's an interesting question. I've been, I've been an American Idol contestant. I'm a hockey coach. I've, started a railroad company and uh, but more importantly I'm I'm an educator in Southern California and uh, right now I'm a technology coach who supports eight different high schools uh, 1100 teachers 24,000 students during the day job I've also had the opportunity to write two books one of them I'm a co-author with Matt Vaudry called the classroom chef and my most recent one is a solo project called table talk math that's focused on having conversations with parents and I in that I'm, I'm talking a lot about you know as far as you're asking who I am uh, I share a lot of who I am and and how I became who I am and a lot of it is because of the conversations that I've grown up with my parents talking to me and really being present in my life and, and being there for me and with me through everything so just you know making sure that that I'm I'm stimulated and not in the sense of the the games and and having something to do, but stimulated in conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, the book I just got table talk math, the one that you were just talking about and it's awesome. <laughs> and and I, I was thinking before, before you and I were going to get together, I was thinking that teaching tales, okay, that's a podcast about telling stories and this book and what I've read so far, cause I've only had it in my hands for a couple of days. You tell stories of, like you just kind of mentioned in your in your brief bio of kind of your your upbringing and and the conversations that you had around your table in your house with your mom and dad. So I guess that's kind of what I want to talk about is because I had an amazing conversation with one of my parents just the other day last week and I asked him permission because I was like, "Oh my gosh, this is this is perfect." <laughs> when I talked with John, he said that he and his family were at a restaurant, a local restaurant, having dinner and a small kind of independent shop. And the dad said that he he turned to his son and said, Hey James, he said, Where how much how much money do you think they're making in this restaurant right now? And he said that they completely had for like 20 minutes a conversation where, okay, well let's take a look. Our check is about Eh, we'll round up to about forty dollars for the family. How many people do you have here? How far, how long is it open? And he literally said for twenty minutes he was engaging his elementary school student in a conversation about math and was really. He said he said his wife was like, "Enough, guys, let's just eat our food." <laughs> but but the conversation that, that he had, and I and I thought to myself, that is exactly what your book is about. Am I am I right? That's a huge part of it. Yeah. It's, and the, the prompt that you're saying he brought was the perfect one. It, it was very open-ended and it, it gave an easy entry point. Like I was going to ask how old his son was or his child was because, you know, maybe that's a question that only high school kids should be able to answer, but third grade. Yeah. Third, third grade. grader <laughs> is able to, to sit down and, and talk through it. And, the big key there is talking through it and not having dad say, Oh, well, you know, there, there, there's a lot of overhead. So you just need to subtract a whole bunch. And this is the answer. Like, it was, I'm assuming if it's going on for 20 minutes, it's a conversation that developed together. Yes, exactly. He, he, he's, and he, he said to your point, exactly. He didn't go into, 
overhead and all that kind of stuff. He's because he thought, you know what, that could be a secondary conversation that we'll have later. But he just kind of asked those prompting questions, and he said his son just kind of completely ran with it and was engaged in a conversation about math for twenty minutes. <laughs> yeah. So, well, and it, and for him, for the kid, for even for the dad, like I'm I'm assuming that it wasn't a conversation about math. It was a conversation about their current setting. You know, we're at the restaurant. Let's, let's talk about it. And about life. Yeah. It, and, I mean, it's, I mean, cause we always say, when am I going to use this in real life? Bingo. Yeah. Here, here's, here's when you're going to use it in real life. I know recently I was dropping off my daughter uh, at the mall. She was going to meet one of her, one of her friends and have lunch at uh, red Robin. My daughter's 16. And as we were talk, talking and dropping her off, I had the conversation about tipping <laughs> and okay, when the check comes, let's talk about how you're going to tip. And because <laughs> as a former server myself, waiting tables all through college, tipping is very important to me. Absolutely. So um, yeah, so that was another real life conversation. But what, what is the, do you have a story particular, a particular story kind of that that led to you writing this perhaps something from because in terms of like the introduction of your book you talked about um the conversation that you had around the table and game nights and things like that so what led to you writing it well what led me to write the book was being in a position as a parent and as you know being in in that that role changes your outlook on education, changes your outlook on a lot of things, a lot of life. Yeah. Um, but for me, it was this, this realization that we in education are doing a lot to try to support teachers and a lot to build them up and try to, you know, add more quivers into the, or add more arrows into the quiver or, you know, give them more resources. And parents are sitting on the sidelines like, I want to play too. I want to help too. And great point. Oftentimes they just don't know where to look and you know, they're, they're having conversations. I have to believe that all but a few anomalies are actively engaged in their children's lives, no matter if they're in kindergarten or graduate students at a college level, hopefully they're involved at some point, but it's more of, I, I need more ideas. I need some fresh stuff. And for me in writing the book, it was, me sitting down with my first grade son and you know he's going through his addition stuff it's like hey let's let's take this and have some fun with it and you know putting out legos and talking about patterns and being able to build things up from there uh you know you talk about the the introduction in the book there's you know, we, we grew up watching hockey all as a kid uh, you know i grew up an la kings fan funny that uh, i'm now the head coach as, as i was saying earlier uh, <laughs> congratulations so, again that's, thank that's, you that's fantastic. Yeah. yeah uh but you know growing up as a kings fan we would watch the games and and one of the nights i remember fondly or we watching the game you know kings versus i believe the new jersey devils and uh gets real intense Tim Waters winds up to shoot the puck and the power goes out. And instead of my parents cashing it in saying, all right, you know, that was the entertainment for the night. We're done. Yeah. My, my dad went over to the, the junk drawer and uh, got a flashlight. My mom went over and got the, the game Othello and we sat down and we played and they turned that into a really good opportunity to build the family structure and to really build conversations into or uh, build math-based conversations into what we were already doing. Yeah. Well, and, and it's, it's called table talk math, mm -hmm. but I, I, I liked, I was, I was reading a little bit earlier today. I mean, just in terms of the number of families today that ha actually sit down around the dinner table and how it's way less than when you and I were <laughs> in elementary school. I mean, something like in the 20%, 24, 25% that, actually sit down every day of the week and have dinner together. Sure. Um, I know my family doesn't. <laughs> my daughter's got swim practice and all that kind of stuff. There's life, life happens, but um, to give, give, give it, do you have an example of, I'm thinking of one, but, but you're going to have a way better one example of, of something that a parent could, because I totally agree. Parents, where do I start? What, what do I, I mean, again, as a parent myself, 
where do I start having that conversation? Your book is full of, of just even pictures. I, I like the would you rather. Can you, can you give like listeners an example of a would you rather uh, conversation starter? Yeah, well, I'll share the one in, in the book and then I'll, I'll share one more. The one in the book that I talk about or one of them in there is my parents giving me a, my brother and I, uh, a prompt, you know, would you rather have, I think it was like $20 for the Harvest Festival, which, which was our town's fair for the year. Uh, would you rather have cash and that way you can do whatever you want with it or do you want $40 worth of tickets or, you know, it was, it was one of those situations where my parents could have easily just made the decision for us and said, Hey, you're going to, you're going to go and you're going to take this option. And I've, I've made that decision for you because I know it's the best thing for you. And here you go, go have fun. Uh, instead, they gave me the option. Which one do you want? You know, do you want to go on more rides? Well, we'll go with more tickets. Do you want to play some more games and have some food and, you know, have a little bit left over because they knew that I was the kind of kid who would save as much money as I possibly could. <laughs> uh, you know, they gave me that option and, and they gave me and my brother, my brother and I, a chance to talk to each other about it, talk with them about it, and really leave it open-ended for us to be able to make the best decision that we thought would benefit us. Uh, you know, it's not just the fair though. We, uh, here in lovely, beautiful Southern California, actually, most places that, uh, that have high traffic areas nowadays, uh, you have congestion and you know my commute home I have to decide am I going to take the freeway or should I take side streets and I talk with my my first grade son when I pick him up from school hey you know Luke do you want to should we take the 15 or, or should we take side streets up to up to the house today and you know he's a first grader so his is his his backseat driving isn't uh, as polished as some but <laughs> you know just involving them in the process and and having having them empowered enough to have a voice at the table, I think is the most important part. Oh yeah. And, and, and I'm thinking of the story, you, you, the one you shared about the fair, you want 20 bucks cash or you want $40 in tickets, empowering you to make that decision. And then after the fact, reflecting, Oh man, I should have taken the $40 <laughs> in tickets and, 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 and being able to have that conversation because obviously that's not a life or death decision but right. but being able to put that in your hands and let you make that decision or you asking your son where do you want to which way do you want to take he chooses the 15 or whatever and it ends up being the great call or it ends up being perhaps a, a longer detour and um you talk about oh well what would we do differently i mean i like your would you, the like the bag of chips i think i <laughs> yeah. I, one. I think uh would you rather have like a big bag of chips to share or an individual or one of those individual ones by yourself? And I mean, just what a great conversation starter. Yeah. So you I mean, you were asking about, you know, where to, where to start. And in the book, I talk about a lot of different ways to start having that conversation. And for me, it was also really important to let the readers know that I didn't come up with these things. Yes. I created, would you rather, but their estimation, prompts that are in there from a guy named Andrew Stadel who created estimation180.com. Fawn Wynn created a site with nothing but visual patterns at visualpatterns.org. Mary Barassa with which one doesn't belong or wodb.ca. Uh, Nat Banting created fraction talks that's just nothing but an image that has a part shaded and you're supposed to figure out what fraction is shaded. Um, you know, and, and Annie Fetter who did a lot of work around noticing and wondering so bringing in those experts and having them contribute pieces along with their free resources that parents can go online and start to get ideas from. Once you start going onto those websites, you start getting ideas. It's like, I can do this. I can create my own thing. Yeah. And it gets a lot easier to kind of snowball that idea into something that is applicable to a conversation you're having with your own child. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm excited about something like this because, again – Going back to my own daughter, I remember when she was in sixth grade and her coming home and working on math homework and the struggle that we had in, because it had been, and I, and I was a teacher. <laughs> it's like, we're, we're having these tear filled conversations sometimes because it was, the math was hard. And I was, I had, a, I mean, I, 
I taught it for 15 years <laughs> and we were having a hard time going through. But then each year that she moved up to seventh, she moved up to eighth. She's now a sophomore. And last year, because I taught fifth, fourth, and fifth grade in my career, last year was the point where she would come to me for help. And it was, sorry, sweetheart, <laughs> you've maxed out. <laughs> you've maxed that out. <laughs> he, he, you, you have surpassed your father in terms of, because it's been, I mean, I, I did pre-calc and all that kind of stuff way back in high school and college, but it's been a long time since I've done that. So I'm just thinking, wow, if it was that hard, if it's that hard for an educator who has a background in it, how hard is it for those, for those parents who, who maybe haven't studied or haven't done things like that? So I just think having those informal conversations like you, you're providing opportunities for, that is going to be so, so helpful. Have you heard, have you heard any stories from people who have used things like, obviously you, I'm sure you have stories from your own kids, but have you heard any uh, positive feedback, so to speak? Yeah. So I, I uh, along with the book, I have a free weekly newsletter, tabletalkmath.com and parents can sign up for it. And every now and then I'll get a, an email sent to me and kind of sharing how they, they approach the problem. And, uh, you know, one of the times I, I called on people to see, you know, what are you doing this weekend? How are you engaging your child in math based conversation? And, you know, they were, they were stacking up fruit loops, fruit loops and Cheerios and seeing who could make the tallest stack and, and what would be the best way of designing it so that you could get the most, uh, height out of it. And, you know, just the little stuff that you may think of, you may not think of, but just those ideas that, that spark out of natural conversation. And as, and as you're saying that, I'm thinking, how fun is that? Yeah. <laughs> you, you got a, you got a first grader, second grader, shoot, you got a 10th grader. Let's be, let's stack Cheerios. Let's stack sure. Fruit Loops and see kids be going to town on something like that. <laughs> yeah. And the well, conversation, go ahead. It, sorry. In physics class, you know, taking it up to the high school level, one of the big uh, capstone projects is the, the toothpick bridge. Yeah. And, you know, you have to, using nothing but glue and toothpicks in most physics classes, this is the, the, the capstone project. Um, how much, you know, can you, can you build a bridge that holds 50 pounds and that's great, but building up to it as a parent at home, you know, Hey, I want to, I want to be able to support my child as much as possible. Those types of activities, maybe it's not fruit loops or Cheerios, or maybe it is, you know, we yeah. oftentimes we think that, you know, my kids are too old for that kind of stuff. Adults still like stickers. Adults still like playing games. Adults still like having those frivolous conversations that have roots in mathematics, but it's really more about the conversation. They they want to they want to have some connection, and yeah. that's really what it's all about. And gosh, that exactly. I mean, I'm I'm pumped about this, man. <laughs> I'm pumped about it. And and again, it's like this isn't a book selling podcast. <laughs> that's not what this is about. But I but I can say as again as a parent. And I mean, I, I love that I actually highlighted it. One of your lines in here, what does it say? This book is, this book is not about Common Core. I liked that. And you said, you said like, and, for, and you're never going to see those two words together in the rest of the book because it's, it's not what it's about. And while math conversations are important, I think even more important than that is what you've touched on like in your stories that you've shared is it's family time. You're getting together with, kind of going the whole global school play day, the importance of kids getting out and playing. In something like this, they're talking. Moms and dads, uh, sons and daughters are sitting around the table and they're talking. And you're combining talking with education. So, but, but even if it wasn't educational, if they're talking, gosh, that right there, that's what it's all about. Yeah, so. that's... To me, if, if that's the biggest thing that people get out of it is to have more conversations with your kids. I mean, in episode 11, you had Scott on to, to talk and, you know, great opportunity to bring in Global School Play Day. Hey, kids want to play. Kids want to talk. And they want to they have meaningful relationships. They want to build meaningful relationships with the people around them they respect and they trust. And for everyone's sake, hopefully they respect and trust their parents yeah and, you know it's it's that opportunity to really build something you yeah know, it, it it and it's fun i, well, I enjoy it yeah they and, and they gosh our kids want to spend time with us 
I mean, just yesterday, yesterday afternoon, Dad, he's got a little hockey net in the garage. Dad, you want to you want to go into the hockey net and and uh, and and just, and play a little shoot a, shoot a little hockey? And I was like, yeah, bud. And the look on his face was priceless. It was just, I mean, he wants to spend time with his dad. Yeah. And and it's like it doesn't have to be hockey. It could be a hey, how how many uh whatever it is. I mean, <laughs> how many do you think are, are in that pile? How many, whatever. And it's just, it's conversation. And I think those are the types of things like you with watching hockey with your parents growing up and the story about the power going out. Those are the things that they're going to remember. I, yeah. I sat around and we built fruit loops with my mom. We built fruit, the family and we, and I won, I built the biggest tower or whatever it is. <laughs> so yeah, I, I shared that story with my mom. Uh, I'm notorious in the family for having a terrible memory. My mom will bring stuff up. You know, remember when we did this? I'm like, no, I'm sorry. And a lot of things I, I've forgotten, which isn't a badge of honor in any way. But <laughs> I shared that story with her. She's like, you remember that story of all the things? You remember that? I'm like, yeah. Yeah, I do. It was, it was cool. Maybe it's partly because the power went out right when Waters was about to score a goal. But, you know, it was, it was one of those things that stuck with me yeah yeah that's that's awesome well i'm i'm excited about uh creating experiences with my with my kids more because of this but but also as a site principal of an elementary school i'm excited to kind of take the resources in here and as we're winding down this school year and getting ready to start the next school year i'm excited to share this with our parents and and we're i'm planning on kind of having some coffee with the principal type events and giving this, giving copies of this to our parents and going through it because you said at the beginning of, of our conversation, so many parents are saying, where do I start? <laughs> I, I want to spend time with my kids. I want to, I want to have those conversations, but where do I start? This is, you have provided a ton. And again, your table talk math newsletter I love like that. Did, you talked about that already, or did you not? Yeah, yeah, I touched on that. Yeah, the weekly. I mean, weekly like new, fresh ideas of things. I mean, the one that you, I think, the the most recent one is you. You'd snapped a picture of some big truck in front of you that had a bunch of pipes, just a whole <laughs> yeah. bunch of pipes, and your prompt was like, "How many? How many pipes do you think are there?" And then, and how'd you get to that number? I mean, because there's a zillion ways which is the ways to get there of, of to think of how did you get there? And I think that's the whole, that's what we're trying to get kids to do is yes, we want them to get the right answer, but we want them to be able to explain how'd you get there? Cause then if you didn't get there correctly, you can, we can maybe find where you, where you made your mistake or something like that. So. Yeah. And, and you, and you hit on it pretty well. Um, you know, that, that picture, that was me driving behind a, a semi and, there's a, an array of steel pipes loading on on the back of a flatbed on our way to baseball practice. And, you know, as we're stuffing down dinner and trying to find a way to, you know, get picked up from work and, and head right over to baseball practice for the boys and saw that. It's like, yeah, let's do this. And we're, we're, we're having a conversation in the car. Yes, we are. And, you yeah. know, the, the whole idea of table talk math is to bring things to the table, but the table is a very um, arbitrary object that, uh, can be more figurative, figurative than literal. You know, you, you touched earlier on how much time parents are, or how much time families are spending eating at, at the table together. And, and it's low and it's low for a lot of reasons, whether it's single parenting or, um, you know, different shifts or, mm -hmm. you know, you're a site principal and you don't get to go home until later in the evenings. And, you know, there's a lot that, that goes on, especially in, in the culture that we are in now where it's all go all the time and uh, you know dual income families so i think taking any opportunity we can to show our kids that their their ideas their thoughts and their conversations matter to us i think is is a, a really important thing to take away yeah absolutely absolutely agree john thank you sir i, I appreciate the time so yeah Likewise. uh where where can people find you online? I know you're on the Twitters and uh, where, if somebody wanted to find out more information, uh, learn from you online, where could they find you? Well, they can find me a whole bunch of different ways. So I'll give you a few of them. Uh, if you're on Twitter, you can find me at jstevens009. Uh, blog at fishing4tech.com. Uh, once again, the 
newsletter is at tabletalkmath.com and the book is available on Amazon, Table Talk Math. Uh, but if people want to just have a conversation, want to reach out and they're curious about things, they feel free to email me. My email is john at tabletalkmath.com and I promise I will answer every single email that gets sent my way. So you know, I'm, I'm all for being able to bounce off new ideas or if your listeners have uh, an idea that they want to share and be a, a guest contributor on the, the newsletter, I'd be more than happy to have somebody on there and sharing their perspective. It's always nice to get some fresh ideas. Awesome. Well, again, purpose of that is like the 80th time I've said this purpose of this broadcast was not to sell your book, <laughs> but, but, <laughs> but because again, I mean, purpose of every time I do one of these recordings, I like to share stories. The whole purpose is to encourage. I, I, I hope that anyone listening to any of the broadcasts, whether it's previous stories or this one is to be encouraged that, you know what, regardless of your background, regardless, regardless of your education level, regardless of how busy you are, you can have quality conversations with your kiddos. It can have math as the basis of that without being a worksheet at the table. Fruit Loops, Fruit Loop Towers. <laughs> just Fruit Loop Towers. Just, nothing, just remember Fruit Loop Towers. <laughs> Maybe that'll be the title of this podcast. Fruit Loop Towers. Go John for it. John Stevens and Fruit Loop Towers. All right, man. <laughs> well, thank, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And thanks everyone for listening. If you haven't already done so, be sure to subscribe in iTunes or Google Play. And if you like what you hear, share it with a friend. Drop us a review. That would be very much appreciated. All right, everyone, thank you so much again, and until next time, have a good one. <laughs>